I have owned a variety of MIDI controllers over the years, and they really fall into kind of three categories for me. There's been the control surface that I want to use in the studio, and there's been MIDI controllers that are ideal for live performance, typically with more keys. And then I've owned a few small, um, small MIDI controllers that I take with me in my mobile rig. There are things people just don't tell you about how those controllers work with Logic. And the purpose of this video is to kind of expose some of those little bits of information that aren't always highlighted in the manual or in your typical YouTube video. The level of integration with Logic really varies from product to product. Every vendor that sells a MIDI controller will tell you that it works with Logic. And that's true. There are some basic MIDI functions that every keyboard has. You can play notes, the pitch bend and modulation wheels, and the sustain pedal will work with any digital audio workstation. There's nothing specific in the device for those basic functions. But beyond that, there are capabilities that are specific to Logic. And in the case of the Novation Launch Key, I just want to help you understand how that works. This other category of functions, I call control surface capabilities because when you set them up in Logic, you decide what control surface you're going to use under control surfaces setup, you're going to pick what kind of device is being used to control these advanced features within Logic. You can see in my setup, there's multiple devices, but the launch key Mark III is one of them. When you set up the Novation launch key, there's an important flag that must be turned on to take advantage of those advanced features. It's in this Control Surfaces menu, MIDI Controllers. This auto flag has to be checked. Now, just as a reminder, all of these knobs, buttons, dials, and pads perform various functions. The pots across the top can be assigned to device, volume, pan, and sends. And those functions are specific to logic. Similarly, the faders can be assigned to device, volume, send A, and send B. And the pads themselves can be assigned to session, drum, scale or chord, and a user chord mode. When the Novation launch key is in session mode, the transport controls work. The click can be turned off and on, loop can be turned off and on, record, play, stop, changing tracks. When the faders are assigned to volume, the mixer works with the faders. Now you can assign the pots to do different things. If I choose shift, volume, the pots will control the volume. If I press shift pan, they'll do the panning, as you can see. Now, one thing they don't tell you is that the assignment of the faders and the assignment of the pots cannot be the same thing. That seems to be uh, something that isn't obvious, but if you assign the faders to do volume, then the pots will not do volume. So you can't have them assigned to the same thing at the same time. Another important part of that integration with Logic is the use of the smart controls. If you turn on the smart controls for an instrument here, you would expect the pots to control things. And they do. You can see the parameters of the electric piano are changing as I make adjustments to these knobs. But that only works when the pots are assigned to the device mode. So if I change this to one of the custom modes, Shift Custom Mode 1, the pots don't do anything. So it has to be 
in-device mode. And that is pervasive to all the instruments that come delivered from Logic and the plugins. So that's a feature that you, you want to make use of for sure. But then you run into the situation where you're using third-party software. In this case, I've got the augmented strings virtual instrument from Archuria. And when I turn these knobs, nothing happens on the screen. For that to work, I have to put it into a custom mode. I put it into custom mode one, and lo and behold, all of the knobs now work. And while it's in that custom mode, those knobs will not control smart controls. So essentially, you have to switch the assignment of these pots depending on whether you're using Logic's delivered instruments and plugins or third-party plugins. Same is true for the assignment of the pads. You can put them into drum mode, in which case the pads are really just sending MIDI notes that would be normally assigned to drums. So if I go into this kit for an example, I can use the pads to play drums, same way I would have used the keys. But when I'm done recording the drums using the pads, I need to go back into session mode to get full access to the transport controls and the other capabilities. This switching the assignment of the pots and the faders and the pads becomes critical to using this keyboard to do everything. Just going to add another instrument here. I'm adding Vital, which is a third-party synth. Since Vital is not one of the delivered Logic instruments, the knobs or pots that are assigned aren't doing anything unless I put it into custom mode. In custom mode, all of a sudden the pots work. If you go into the presets, there's another interesting feature they don't tell you about, and it's three dots. If you press three dots on this controller, you have mouse functions built into the pads. This will let you scroll through different presets. Without having to touch your computer or a mouse, you can navigate. A great feature they don't tell you much about. The buttons underneath the fader perform two things. They act to arm and disarm the tracks that you want to record. And they are the selection buttons for the track. One of the features is that when you press the button for the track, it opens up the instrument. It's kind of a neat capability. Remember, the keyboard has to be in session mode for some of the basic functions to work. For example, the pads can perform solo or mute. But for that to work, you can't be in drum mode, you have to be in session mode. So what you're experiencing here is really two levels of integration. At the control surface level, the pots, the pads, the faders, and the transport controls all perform unique functions within Logic. And in those modes, those messages sent by the keyboard to the software are being interpreted and captured by Logic. They're not being passed through to third-party software as generic MIDI messages. So getting your head around the idea that you have to switch between one mode and another in order to make full use of the integration takes a while to learn. But at the end of the day, I think the launch key Mark III is actually one of the most capable and flexible MIDI controllers available. Let's just take a quick look at the Native Instruments Control M32. It's a great mini keyboard with 32 keys, and it works particularly well with Native Instruments software. 
Before you start logic, you'll notice that none of these buttons are lit up. Uh, but as you load logic, it's going to load the OSC driver, which provides the logic integration. So I'm just going to open a project. And you'll notice right away that the button has switched into track instance. Once logic is loaded, you'll see plugin MIDI is highlighted. Track instance is available and browser is available. Transport controls work. You can turn the metronome off and on and the loop. So I click on the track instance mode and the jog wheel can be used to navigate these three buttons, track instance, plugin MIDI and browser all become critical for using this device in logic and switching between instrument or device mode and logic control. So for example, in complete control, if I open up complete control, there's an instrument here and I want to be able to control all of the variables of this instrument. For that, I have to be in plugin mode. Makes sense because we're controlling a plugin. And when I do, you can see I can control all of these uh, parameters for this particular synth, even the volume here of the plugin. You can see that doesn't happen if it's in track mode, of course. When I change this, it's not going to have any effect. These knobs perform various pages of functions. So right now it's in layer macro master mode, but there's a sequencer, several other things that you can control. So although you only have eight knobs, they can perform many, many different functions. But while it's in plug-in mode, of course, the jog wheel is not controlling logic. But if I click on the track mode, oh yeah, I am. Okay, so you're switching back and forth between these two modes. And there's one other mode here. If you click on browser, the jog wheel is going to help you navigate through complete control. It's playing previews. Here's where things get a little hairy. I'm going to add Analog V from Archeria, and I'm just going to pick a favorite preset. I'll just take this one. So you can see it's in track instance mode. I still have logic capabilities. I want to be able to control these parameters down here with, with the encoders. So let's uh, try the MIDI learn option here. Click on learn. I should be able to assign these. Okay, now they're working. I can see the volume changing. Timber's working. So it's a bit fluky. Some things are working, some things are not. But the trick here is, after I'm done, can I go back into track instance mode and use the transport control? Yep. You can tell just by the number of keyboards I have in the background that I've gone through a lot of MIDI controllers. And through trial and error, I've determined that two of the best are the Novation Launch Key Mark III and the Native Instruments M32. In fact, any of the keyboards from Novation are similar and work in a similar way. And all of the controller keyboards from Native Instrument I would also rate as very highly regarded, particularly for using Logic. Interestingly, neither one of the vendors goes to great lengths to demonstrate all of the idiosyncrasies that I've covered in this video. So if you own these keyboards or are looking to buy a MIDI controller, hopefully this video will help. If this is the kind of content that interests you and you find it useful, click on the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. I'm really interested in your opinion.